What's up everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, we review episode 8 of the Halo TV show, and I'm sure you're all wondering, where the hell were we last week? And there's been a craziness that was going on, uh, where we were pretty busy, as well as the fact that last week's episode was so trash, it was very difficult to really pile in a, a whole episode review, because honestly, the review could have lasted 5 minutes, and we could have told you how we felt about it the entire time so what we're going to do today is actually add in our thoughts from episode 7 and then carry on with the review for episode 8 but obviously i can't do this alone like always i have alongside with me the mars band crew and to my left is langella kill what's up everyone and to my right is hockey hey guys well uh so the basically the way we're going to format this episode like we've done before is uh, we're going to kind of give our our feelings about what we watched and give our brief uh pros and cons while we give our, our rating so give our rating while also talking about what you liked and disliked for the episode and then uh and then we'll move on to the spoiler discussions which is going to be in the second half of the show so if you have not watched the episode and you want to kind of get some feedback about it this is the time to watch we're not going to give any spoilers for this first half but second half we will discuss our spoilers and boy there's some some things to discuss here so i kind of want to get your ratings right out the gate and you can also talk to talk to us about what you felt the last week's episode as well if you want to say your rating for that too uh, that's fine. If not, just say it's, it's dumpster fire and I would completely understand. Um, so, Haki, I kind of want to get your feelings first on this. Uh, what is your rating? And tell me why you made it that rating. So I'm no longer going with the video game rating, even though the other uh, ones were the video game. I'm just I'm just rating this just how how the episode is straight up. This was like a like a three nine. Uh, it was not good. Um, probably either the second, I'm going to say probably the third worst episode, just super boring. Like, you know, one cool part, maybe two cool parts. Um, but other than that, it was terrible. The first episode, uh, excuse me, the, the one before this one, number seven, I was the only one that watched it. <laughs> uh, you guys, you guys didn't even watch it. It was horrible. I'm going to go with like a 1.8. It was bad. It was real bad. So, um, I, but this episode, it was just barely any action, no actual gunfight, no uh, no covenant uh, fighting with the Spartans. It was just, it was just bad. So, yeah. So overall, it, it looks like you're you're off the bandwagon for the Halo. What's show. your pros? I didn't so, hear any yeah, pros. Well, do you there. have any pros <laughs> on this one? Other than I, I'm not gonna say the pros because they're gonna spoil stuff. I mean, uh, there was, well, yeah. I mean, we know the big. I mean, at this point. You know, uh, details, if, you don't, if you don't know that, you know the big, uh, yeah. If you don't know the chief class and cheeks, then I don't know what else. Yeah, I mean that was no, not not that. I mean the, the the cool, the one cool thing was the the Spartans fighting each other. Hopefully that's not a spoiler, but that's literally my one thing. And then um, I, one other pro is you get to see the Halo ring for twenty five seconds at the very very end again, which is the coolest part. So a total of so, maybe. So you know, your official rating was what, Hucky? Uh, I don't even remember. Four two. Three nine. Three nine. Three nine. Yeah, three nine. Three nine. So, so Angelica, what's your rating for this? Yeah, last week I uh, was a little busy, and so I didn't catch the episode. And then I saw um, a bunch of content creators that I trust, and also watched the recap. Um, and I was like, "This is not worth watching." So <laughs> I just kind of glossed over that uh, episode yeah. seven this week. Boy, um, I just didn't enjoy it. I know people, if they're not Halo fans, maybe they did enjoy it a little more. But um, as a Halo fan, I did not enjoy it at all. And so my rating is a 4.0. Um, I'm actually slightly higher than Haki, which is a little crazy. But I'm at a 4.0 because the pros, um, I do think it boosts it up just slightly. Um because of the Spartan fight at the end, which I thought was pretty good. Um, but the cons, I mean, I'll stick with pros. Again, the, the Spartan fight and Cortana, I think, are two uh, good aspects. The Silver Team can, continues to do a good job. And the cons, I mean, we gotta, we're got we going to go into a deep discussion is uh, Master Chief. I don't even want to call him that. I just call him John at this point because he's not Master Chief. Um, it feels real character assassination 
Um, and I've talked about it for the last few weeks. So it's character assassination of Master Chief and no covenant for, again, multiple weeks in a row besides a brief glimpse of their firepower, but no covenant scenes. Yeah. Um, so you're, so Haki, you said three, nine, and Jelko, you said four this yeah. week. Okay. Well, I'll give my, my pros and cons for this. When I'm looking at this episode, the cons come from the point where this is the this is the epitome of what we had called for weeks. I think I'll give Langell Kill the, the credit here. He had gave this prediction, I think around episode four, around that, like around that time. He said this was gonna happen, and I said, you know, if that were to occur, I would honestly be, you know, like out the door. Like if I felt as if this was gonna happen, then I'd be out the door, or the other one would be my prediction that Maquis would replace the Arbiter as being that storyline of, of, of a redemption arc of some kind, and that's still that's still in the yeah, works. It's still, you know, it's still open. So uh, when I'm looking at the cons, a lot of the dumb things that I was afraid of that they were going to do is actually happening. And the fact is, and a lot of other content creators made a good point about this. CBS is the people that own CW, and it feels as if they're rehashing some of these teen drama writers into like halo tv show and it doesn't seem like you would think that they would realize that maybe like teen wolves is not really the best the writers who made teen wolves are the one same people you should do with a halo tv show and honestly it kind of makes sense that that would be the case because the fact is the writing is dumb it, it there's no there's no real appeal to it whether you're a halo fan clearly if you're, not, if you're a halo fan this is not for you but if you are not a halo fan I don't even know which part of this is entertaining to people. Um, and it just it seems weird and cringy and not really entertaining. Um, and it's like... Who, who, is this, who is this show written for? That's yeah, the question. Yeah, that's I the have. point. Is it, is it and, for a young audience? I, I, but I, yeah. no, they do cringy stuff, which isn't weird, for the young yeah. audience. It's, yeah. and, that's the thing. If this, was, if this was... If this was, I think I'll, I'll, I'll definitely give a shout out to Late Night Gaming. They did a pretty good piece about, you know, really debating that. Like, is this for a teen audience? Because if it is, then you're seeing some weird scenes happening. You're like, maybe it's not for teens. It's for adults. And you're like, if I'm an adult, the, the writing is just so bad. I can't even fathom. But let's talk. I'll briefly say the pros before I give my official rating. I think when I look at the pros, it has to be on the tail end of the episode. Like the final 15 minutes was really the only positive that I could see in my eyes. Because it actually had some decent drama between the, the power structure as well as the issues that are arising between Chief and the rest of the Spartans, which is a, it's a, it was interesting. And like the spot guy said, the Silver Team is the only, uh, other than Cortana, the only shine light with Soren, right? And if you're not going to have Soren in the episode at all, that means the other groups have to shine. And Silver Team is still doing a pretty good job. Cortana is doing, he's probably one of the most stable and closely resembling the character that they're supposed to be. Uh, and you know, like that, I was nervous when I didn't see Cortana being blue in the very beginning. But now it seems like as the episodes go on, she's becoming getting more and more of a blue hue to her, which kind of makes me like a little happier. Um, but I'm gonna be more of a Debbie Downer. I'm gonna say this is a 3.5 out of out of 10 um, because I'm looking at this as being basically uh, there is some good things that happen out of this, but. If I'm putting on to the same par as the other episodes, I think I have this right around the same level as episode, I believe episode four-ish, I think. Uh, I think that's kind of where I put, I had put this rating because yeah, there are some decent scenes and the dramas are right, but it's like a whole, we've had three straight episodes, no covenant, right? No covenant for three episodes straight. The only thing we saw of covenant was the glassing uh, of an outer colony, which was a great scene, but like I said, it only lasted for 10 seconds. You didn't actually see it happen. You just see glassing. You just see the, the after effects. Like you can't even have a, a, a freaking scene to show us what happened there. It's like better show us than don't than, than tell us, right? That's the whole yeah. that's a whole like phrase that people would rather say. Like granted, I give this an episode of three and a half, but if I'm saying last episode and what happened was I actually watched a portion of it, but I got so disgusted that I stopped. Like I, I honestly. I, I, I honestly like did I I, I was like in the same boat as Angelical. I got really busy and then I was like I was watching content creators like when they're they're writing about it and sometimes I'm sitting there like you know what they're, maybe they're over the top but then I actually watched it and I'm like this is horrible like this is this is gross and I stopped watching it and and I I am honestly happy I did that to a certain degree because I can just watch the previously on and I would be already gathered on what will happen in that episode yeah. anyway um so that's basically our 
review of this week's episode of the quick review because i wanted to keep this short so we can get to the real discussion that's where everyone really wants to hear our opinions about this next part but if you have not watched the episode and you want to go watch it you should go do that now definitely or take, don't watch it at or all or don't watch it all just watch it <laughs> the spoiler discussion and we honestly will go over it in more detail than they we'll probably save you could ever we'll do. save you the 40 we'll, minutes <laughs> we'll save you the 40 minutes just watch our episode here and we can definitely provide all the content you need to know because we we at least will be honest with you when something's stupid or not um but like i said if if you decide to do that to yourself then please make sure before you go drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content and up on next on our video is going to be this spoiler discussion about this show so let's head over to the spoilers well guys spoiler discussion here and uh let's just say there is some cheeks flapping right now and and i thought it's not my cheeks it's it's somebody else's cheeks and it's it's kind of getting to a spot where uh it's kind of a joke at this point. Like, I, I honestly feel more inclined to talk about the memes than actually the episode to a certain degree because, and I was saying this to, to both of you before, you know, I, I'm like watching like content from the original games. I'm just sitting there just making fun of it because it's like I'm using the scene, like making fun of the logic and but putting in like Halo TV series logic. Like, you know, uh, we were just, I was watching Halo 2 and they're like, it's a Chief's getting his brand new armor. He's like, you know how expensive this equipment is, son? He's like, tell that to the Covenant. And he just takes everything off and just gets his butt <laughs> yeah. naked and just gives oh, it back to Oh, it's expensive? Here, yeah. take it back. I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it. Or like, <laughs> like, every, like every time, like, oh, he's like, the walk in the beginning, like, you said there wouldn't be any cameras. Like, you told me you're going to wear something nice. He, I Instantly in the show, he would already have his helmet off walking yeah. around. He would he have, no have no armor. armor. No He'd armor. He'd have no armor. armor around. Like, it, it would be, it'd be kind of disgusting. So... What we're going to do is I'm going to talk about every 15 minute interval because what I found was that as episodes went on, they started making them shorter and shorter. So now this is not even an official 60 minute episode. The freak that maybe the first two episodes was 60 minutes long. After that, it got the 45 range. And it was kind of funny because there's no commercials, right? So you're like, why do you even have a cut? You get stick to cut it, making it for TV, but it's not. So basically we're going to go over a 15 minute segment i have my notes here so i'll be referencing these as i go along a lot of garbage i basically pooped on this page and that's where <laughs> you know that's what we got so um let's take a look at the first 15 minutes so I'll, I'll kind of do a brief little overview of everything here and then we'll discuss what we think about it so first things first uh you know chief and maki are, are strolling and and skipping through the park this was the equivalent scene to anakin and and uh, uh, Padme walking through the forest of Naboo. Like this, this gave me that same vibe of one. Oh yeah, this looks really nice. And secondly, I, I don't give a crap. Um, so this was very similar to that. Basically, they're walking through the park. They're just talking about you know human humanity uh, as it is. And Maki's kind of in that boat where she's bred to hate the humans, but she is a human. So Chief's kind of just talking about that, and you know even Maki like just just talking about you know the humans beings like and how they act and everything like that and she then all has her nail she here's a dog and all instances she's about to kill the dog and she's like taken like oh crap i just almost just murdered uh murdered something and which honestly that part didn't really like wasn't bad i just felt like okay like this whole scrolling through the park this romance that was like a romeo juliet style romance is kind of just getting dull for me like it's just like you met you only just met and all of a sudden you're in love with each other it's just like what like what? What is going on here? Um, so then the next part right after that is that, and before uh, you keep going, they talked about Halo, right, and and what it's supposed to do. Yeah, and, and this is where this is kind of yeah. like a weird little thing because uh, it they, it kind of gets me confused because the Halo ring, right? It's not a portal. It's a it's a it's a giant beam, and uh, it's a it, obviously we all know it's a weapon. But it's a beam that is supposed to just annihilate all living life, like all biological li living life. And the whole purpose of the rings in the first place was to kill the food that the flood had fed on, right? So anything that was biologically living, it would wipe it out. Um, so the whole point where then Maki, because because Chief asked uh, John, oh sorry, John, John, Master John uh, had 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 asked because I, I can't call him Master Chief anymore, Master John says uh so the rings what why do they why do they care about the rings so much and she says well it's a portal to to send us to this great to send us to the great beyond it was kind of weird because i i understand i guess they're trying to make the connection the same but it's like almost like she was trying to say it was like a portal to bring them to somewhere else 
which is like the great, which is like the head, or you'll become a god or something. So it was kind of confusing because, like, like I said in the original like storylines, they they did it differently. So it's it was just interesting. Well, it, it could be, and keep going. I, it could be. I'll talk. It could be perceived differently. Maybe they just don't know, and maybe that's what they think. Yes, I mean, like the whole point is that the covenant is is technically thinking that this would send them to the great beyond, right? And that's why they call it the great journey. It's the journey that they that they take to become like you know become immortal that's essentially what their the whole point is um now that, that's what i'm saying like it could be skewed to be something else like for because it's a new st- uh, timeline or whatever but it, it kind of just got weirded out because it just didn't sound the same way it, and maybe they just explained it differently I, I mean who knows with this with these writers they could be doing a brand new thing so um so the next part and does you guys want to add anything on that before we move forward no, no, keep, we'll, we'll go after, I guess. So, so the next part is uh, Keys and uh, Admiral uh, Paranoski basically was worried about Chief because they, like the rest of us, like pa- Admiral Paranoski basically was us in saying, what the hell is he doing right now? Like, like how, how, is he, how is he becoming to take a liking to her? She's, we have no idea who she is. We don't trust her. How is any of this? And then Keys is defending him, saying, like, listen, Chief is always on mission. But I'm also going to say, you know, Keys, have you not, noticed anything different about this about about uh master john he's not he's not emotionally stable like we're all expecting him to be um and right in the next part which i thought was probably the best scene other than the the fight later on uh was they show the glassing of uh, an outer colony which it was like a newscast showing like the the glassing that, that had occurred and basically the entire landscape is just molten lava and ash right and Essentially, that is what looks like in the, you know, the games where like after the Covenant basically destroys the colony, they just use their beams and they just glass the entire thing. And I thought, in my opinion, that if they actually showed instead of Chief and Maki, you know, Chief is just sitting there just dreaming about Maki and all that stuff at the beginning. Imagine they showed the glassing of this outer colony by the Covenant. It feels like they like that was where they missed out on an opportunity that would have been really cool. You have you showed the scene where and the, the 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 fact that everyone was staring at this screen just like just devastated. They're like, what the hell are we facing off against? And like, what the these what did the covenant do? And I thought that was a, like a really a a good part because that's essentially showing the power of the covenant. But instead of you showing the power of the covenant by actual combat and showing them doing these things, you're basically just showing us aftermath. Like, no, show us what show us the scene show us that stuff it's more emotional when we see it firsthand i thought that's why in the first episode when they showed literally how brutal the covenant was and they just destroyed the rebels like even though we all like picked apart the rebels being weak as hell but the fact that we saw them be brutal and murder everybody gave you the feeling like yeah the covenant's ruthless and they're strong like they just can't be taken down and it, like you know what i mean like stuff like that makes more sense to me and they just didn't do that they wasted that opportunity um, and I thought that that was probably the best part because it kind of showed the, the fear that everyone has of what the hell they're going to do next. And, and even keys was like, we got to go do something. And that's where chief walks in. And, and basically he, you know, he, he sees this and he tells keys and the admiral, listen, let's get Maki to work with us to tell us where the, you know, tell the, tell us where the, the ring as well as help us, they'll help us find the ring, but also tell us where the covenant is going to be so that we can get the edge on them and attack them before they get to reach. And part of me was like, all right, listen, that's not necessarily the worst idea, but I'm also going to say chief, you don't know who, the, who this, this girl is. And at this point in time, it's like that South Park reference where it's like captain keys literally should have told John, like, dude, you're talking with your dick right now. Like, stop. Like, stop it. Like, it doesn't, like, that doesn't make sense, John, because we don't know who this girl is. We don't trust her. For some reason, John automatically trusts her because he had, like, a, a uh, you know, outer we're world same, experience. Now we're with, the same. Yeah, we're the and same. And he, he we can, the doctrine uh, line. Yeah, which, uh, that, that was one of the dumbest lines, too, because he's like, he's just like, yo, know, how could you t- wipe out an entire life of indoctrination, like, in an instant time? And he's like, well, I did. He's like, I'm sitting there like, dude, stop, shut up. Like, it's just, like, you're not changing it, Maki. You ain't changing her. Like, that's not happening. Like, and Chief just feels like he's just an idiot. Like, he just feels like this is not, this is dumb. He And, and that's why the worst part about this scene, this episode in general, and we'll talk about that near the end, was that it just made Chief look dumber 
than anything I've ever seen a depiction of him before. Like, if I'm going to make a comparison, this is like Game of Thrones making Jon Snow look like, look like a moron. Like, he just, like, everything he does is stupid. It doesn't. Which they no, did at the end. They did. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Like, they, they basically made Jon Snow a moron. Like, and I'm not saying Jon Snow was, like, some brilliant dude that was just outsmarting everyone and everything, but, like, he was never dumb. Like, he never just did dumb things. Like, and Game of Thrones did that with a lot of show, a lot of characters, but it feels like this is what they're doing th- with with Chief right now. It feels like they're making him a moron and acting just all out of emotion when he's supposed to not be, right? He's supposed to be calm and collected, and yeah, you know, he gets angry, but that doesn't just make him do dumb things. Like he he's pretty efficient when he does things. So I kind of, and that was the first fifteen minutes. So I kind of want to get your opinions about what you thought about this. What were, what, which did you like? And which scenes did you like? Which scenes did you not like? from this first 15 minutes of the show. So uh, let's go hockey first. Anything you liked or did not like from this first 15 minutes? Yeah, so I guess we can go with the pros first. So um, kind of like you mentioned, the whole glassing scene was cool that they at least got to mention that, but not seeing, you know, how they got to that point, mm-hmm. you know, not actually seeing the Covenant just absolutely obliterate the planet. You know, as you said, this is a 45 minute show. They had, why didn't they have 15 minutes to show us something, you know? Yep. Um, that was probably the coolest part of, of that first 15 minutes. A walk in the park, um, I thought was silly. Uh, and again, I think, like you said too, the, the Admiral is the only sane one at this point, you know? Um, she's the only one that's pointing out like, hey, Chief is not acting like Chief. And I don't know how Captain Keys is not like totally on board with this, you know? Even in the last couple episodes where, you know, he was asking questions about Halsey and stuff like that. Like, how is Keys not on to, you know, Chief not being stable, you know? So, I, I just thought, again, they had one cool part and they didn't even, you know, they didn't even deliver fully on that one cool part, so. Yeah, dude, uh, this was just like, they just missed out on many good opportunities. But, Langelica, what do you think? Any pros and cons from this one? I don't have really any pros for this first 15 minutes. Um, I can say the glassing was, like you guys said, the coolest part. It's finally showing the power of the Covenant. We have not seen the Covenant for three episodes, but I wanted to see them do it. You know what I mean? Like, can we see some Covenant? This is a Covenant versus UNSC war, and we've now had three episodes without Covenant. Mm-hmm. Like, like, how is this possible? One third of, of the season, the Covenant is not involved. Dude, um, it's, and it's, it's just sad. it's mind numbing, um, and so I don't like. Yeah, the glassing's great. It's just, but like, you still you don't get to see it. They just tell you about it, and you see the aftermath of it. And then when we talk about, you know, all the different things that they change on Halo, and specifically John, uh, John one one seven, because like you, I can't call him Master Chief anymore. Um, and I said this the other because he's not. It feels like the writers wrote him up wrote up a mass effect script and they said hey you know let's you know let's turn uh john into shepherd um that's what it feels more like or like star trek or something you know what i mean like this doesn't this isn't master chief and everyone's gonna say silver timeline this silver timeline that but like when you completely change it you can change you know things in the story you can change aspects of the character when you completely 180 character this is what those you know what you described is showing Right? They have to put in a love scene. They have to put in this developing love scene, that last one episode. No offense. And you talked about, you know, when they were talking about the Halo, and he talked about what about humans that aren't chosen when he asked Maquis this. And Maquis says they get cleansed, right? Couple things. If th- this woman who in the previous episode was told was a prisoner, right? Not the previous, but six. How does she know so much about the Covenant's plans? You know what I mean? Like it didn't like there's no brain cells moving in John at all. Like I don't understand. And then obviously, like you said, next I trust, I trust Maki. Like let's have her help us find the covenant. It's just like it, it's so like you were talking about pacing. It's so rushed, and it's just this this they have to put in a love scene. They have to have this developing love connection, and it, it's just so forced and so cheesy. This is like, uh, like I said, I putting in a love drama in a in a sci-fi is already difficult enough, you know. Be, to be honest, like to do a good romance, 
like that's efficient. I haven't seen that well written and maybe it's Star Wars to a certain extent and that was like not even the newer ones like that was like the like you know what I mean like it's difficult to do that. So then you you force everyone into this love stuff and that kind of trans us transitions right into the second 15 minutes because you know basically how how this starts is the second 15 minutes and I and I knew it was coming. We all knew it was going to happen at some point like especially the way after the last episode was I think everyone can pick out that was going to happen next and so essentially this, how it starts is she brings maki a book and i guess she she kind of remembers back in the time when she was kissing young boys and, and all of a sudden that triggers her to say i i gotta you know i gotta jump in on this and and chief and her get it on they they clap cheeks they whatever you like I, like i said they do this weird cringy touching your scarves thing like let me touch your back and touch my back and then Let's touch each other's arms with with our with our stars on them, and and honestly, I don't know any romantic any romantic feelings where you start touching each other's scars and all of a sudden you just fall in love with each other. And I never I never did that, so I I, I guess that was just a new sci-fi thing, I guess. But um, but yeah, so that happens, and uh, you know what makes it even weirder was Cortana's watching. So just to add some more like weird stuff in this is that it, not only are they getting it on. For the most randomest of reasons, but now Cortana's watching them get it on, so this is now turning into like some really weird stuff, and and I, I it kind of gave me the vibes of like I'm not ru I'm not gonna try to ruin Game of Thrones for anyone, but it was like a scene in Game of Thrones later in the show where that same type of thing happens, and one of the other main characters is just sitting there watching, and it's just like like what like what why do you guys show us this like yeah Cortana's in Chief's head. Like, I think she knows they're having sex right now. I I don't think you gotta show her watching them, like, like just sitting there, just, like, staring at, like, cheeks, Chief's cheeks. Like, I, I don't understand that. There's no point in doing this, but they have to, to kind of show her her feelings of, wow, Chief is really giving it to her, but, um, I don't know, but, so... <laughs> The transition to this is basically Chief is, is thinking with his penis and, uh, you know, that's just obvious. He is because all of a sudden, you know, Chief basically lets his guard down completely. He's passed out. And, and, and I know what the writers are doing here. They kept showing, like, Maki with her finger, like, getting close to his neck in every way possible that she could kill him. Right? But she does it. Of an entire weird, cringy-ass scene you just had of them having sex... The only thing that came out that was somewhat interesting was this part. Was that she had the complete choice to, to murder him, right? Because Chief is dumb, let his guard down completely, didn't didn't even comprehend of an idea that she was a, she was a spy. And she pulls out her she pulls out the technology out of her finger and she throws it away. So that was the only thing that I got that was interesting in this sequence because for this whole Romeo Juliet BS we're throwing at us. It does set up the dynamic that she does like Chief and she's starting to kind of feel that maybe humans aren't evil. Like, maybe, like, you know, that type of thing that she was having. And obviously, we'll talk in the last 15 minutes about how that transitions again. But maybe she has that those feelings for him and now she's going to change her ideals about it and all that stuff. And that was the only thing that I felt like was, was interesting. Um, now, uh, the next part, and this is kind of the last part of this 15 minutes was uh, Catherine Halsey is now being sent off planet because the Admiral Paranoski basically wants her out of there. Like, uh, Admiral Paranoski is nervous that that um, that Master Chief will find out that they knew the entire time that he was abducted and they were in on the whole thing. And so essentially they basically want to get rid of anyone that could be an issue to them, which is Catherine Halsey. They want to send her off planet, get her out of there, and... I guess partly the reasons, and this is where I'm actually interested to see it. The I want to see where they go with this was partly, I guess, the reason why Keys is doing this is because I guess they know that the Covenant's on their way. Like they're trying to hunt them down in some cases, and just wants to get Halsey off the ship, get them away from the entire base, just to get her out of there um, because she's an important asset, and she's like, they're coming. They might be coming here next, so you got to get out of here. And secondly, because they don't want her to be involved in what they do next, right? So it's one of those two things. And they had this good conversation about how essentially Halsey would sacrifice everything in order to get what her end goal is, which is to get the Spartan program as well as Cortana to the next steps 
right, and get access to these relics that essentially will give her the, the technology to advance these people as much as possible. And Keys is like, you, you already sacrificed your family, you sacrificed yourself, what else is there? And she basically says, I'll sacrifice everything in order to accomplish my goal. And it basically just, he was just like, he's done. He's just like, you're getting off, getting off planet by this time. And she basically schemes her way by using that reticle that she had spied on with her daughter, Miranda, in the previous two episodes ago. And now she has full access to the entire security array inside the ship in UNSC because now she has top level access who when she was scheming out her scheming her daughter to kind of just give up a lot of that information. So now she has access to that. And I kind of want to get your opinions before we get the last 15 minutes. Um, pros and cons, did you guess did you like seeing Chief's cheeks? Uh, we were wondering last next time we we're going to see him. So Haki, I want to get your opinion first. Chief's cheeks, were they big? Were they good enough? They firm. I want to get your. This is important. Yeah, they, <laughs> they were uh, they were flappy dappy. We we know that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, big ups to to Langelico. He called it. I didn't think it was going to happen this season, uh, but obviously they're moving the speed of light. Um, must be true love, right? Just meet a girl uh, that got shot First down time. by a, shot down from a Covenant ship, and she's a prisoner, you know. But um, yeah, it was. It was just ridiculous. Uh, you know, he gives you the book. They had to flash back to the kids kissing. You know, I thought we were over that. Uh, that again, just it brought gave me flashbacks of that episode, which was one of the worst episodes. You know, in the entire series. Um, and yeah, the whole touch on the scars was super weird. Um, again, her taking her finger out. You know, like the the weapon in her finger, like you were saying, Mars Man was. You know kind of on the path of her thinking hey maybe you know maybe i can change sides or maybe you know uh maybe like you said humans aren't that bad we'll get into kind of what happens uh, after that but um again the whole scene was just ridiculous um halsey going through the security systems was pretty cool um you know trying to talk to her and everything but that that middle 15 minutes is just horrendous for me man <laughs> It was it was just bad. It was it was pretty gross, dude. I um I, I knew it was gonna happen, and the whole premise behind that of that part made no sense to me. But no. uh, Kill, what's your opinion about what you saw in that uh, second 15 minute segment? Yeah, I'm having uh, internet issues, so I'm not sure you know if you guys can hear me clearly. Um, so bear with me. Um, I did not want this prediction to come true. Uh, so I know I'm getting credit. Um, but this was kind of a worst case scenario, nightmarish uh, thing. And this is kind of goes back to those writers, right? Um, they made it so obvious that this was going to go down. I didn't expect it to come down this quickly, but they made it so blatant that this was going to happen. Um, and, and it makes no sense to me. So, you know, I, I couldn't stand it. I hated every, uh, I hated every moment of it. Um, and again, it was just so just so cheesy and awkward right um you know it gives the book it's like the, that awkward flirting that that john is doing you know like like something you see at a, a cw tv show yeah like it, it was like just so the flash. awkward and stupid <laughs> so yeah watch, they're watch the flash. You know, <laughs> getting it on and uh cortana's watching yeah and uh cortana's watching and Halsey's watching, and everyone is literally broadcasting this. Everyone's this, watching. Uh, everyone's watching. It should just be on the UNSC. It's the intercom. lab assistant. Might as well. Might as well have this well, show on the Cortana, big screen. They're all. They, they have this transition from the glassing. It should be this. Scene. It should just show them having sex on the big screen. So everyone. Yeah, because that's pretty much. It's the what, same what, face. I, I'd have the same face. Like. Yeah. What, like, what and is they were glassing. Glass? Uh, they were glassing the character of of, Ma of Master Chief. <laughs> glassing what that right right so they glassed the civilization, <laughs> and then so they glassed glass. Master Chief's so character uh, in the following uh, scene. Like he was, he was um, because they needed a love quiet. scene. There, there's no reason for oh. it. There, there's no reason for it. There was absolutely none. Um, they just have to, right? Because that's what a that's what people love in shows they need to have that love connection which no you don't not in this one and if you are going to have it at least develop it like a like a some talent 
right? Have some talent and develop it. Not like two episodes ago, uh, John thought she was a spy. Then all of a sudden they travel to the ring together and they start awkwardly touching each other. And then next, the next one is full on trust. Uh, she, um, John has a girlfriend. Just stupid. This is um, this is pretty laughable this part. And and honestly, like I agree with you. It's like, you know, you could have done this romance thing a whole lot better. Like, you know what? Like, I'm not I'm not gonna advocate what they're doing right now at all but let's just say if i was in the shoes of these cw writers i would make it so that maki was like i don't know working alongside the unsc in missions doing things to help them progress in in whatever they're trying to do and then you know make it make it so that it it, it feels more impactful when maki does do that leap when she does because we'll talk, we'll talk about the last segment uh, before we're over, but like essentially, like the day is going to come when when Maki and, and Chief might have to have a showdown. Like that might have to happen. And imagine developing that relationship between those two in a way better way. You make them feel like they, you know, they're working alongside each other. Not saying, oh, she's a Spartan or anything. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that, but make her work alongside Chief. And the rest of the Spartans and missions and, and things, something smaller missions like finding relics or whatever. And then when the day comes when she starts to gain fe feelings for him, she starts questioning her own beliefs as being part of the covenant. And then all of a sudden you're in a predicament. Like you're like, all right, well, Maki is a bad, is on the bad side, but she's also starting to become like kind of a good person too. But that's not what they're doing. They, they kind of. No. And I hate why I hate what you described. Hate it. But that makes more logic than what they that's. What I, I, trust me, like I think that they this would not do anything to to make this show better. But I think it would make more sense in the how they like each other or anything. Like the only thing we've seen so far is that they're both chosen ones or blessed ones. What do you want to call them? Like that's not that that shouldn't be automatically the reason why they want to have sex. Like that should not be the reason why they fall in love with each other instantly. Like that just doesn't make any sense. So. Let's go to the next segment here. So uh, Halsey gains access to everything, right? I was laughing. I talked about last segment. So now she gets in, in touch with Maki. Um, they're all ch she's changed. So don't worry, Maki. Uh, Chief's not naked still. He's up. He's got no helmet, nothing on, just his Under Armour, Under Armour shirts and stuff. So um, Halsey comes in contact with Maki and basically tells her, "Hey, listen, you can't trust the, the UNSC with the relic. You need to get the relic." You, Chief, need to bring it to the Spartans and to her. Do you need to get off planet so they can do whatever they need with it? Because she straight up just tells Maki, you can't trust the UNSC. You can't trust them all. You got to trust me. I'm the only one that's going to help you. And she says, why can't you tell John? And he's like, well, John is not stable enough to really deal with this mission right now. Because obviously she's not going to tell the whole truth. But the whole point is, is that that's basically her her, her scheme, which is to try to get Maki to think UNSC is not is not you know, trustworthy, which she already kind of is that has that feeling already. And then says, you need to get John with you to the, to me with the artifact instead of them. Um, so obviously Halsey then orders the Spartans to basically bring in Maki and chief and the artifact and chief is probably not going to like this. So you just got to knock his ass out. Worst case, we'll just have Cortana take him over completely. You bring Maki alongside the artifact because essentially then if you have Maki, you don't need John to basically touch the artifact and do all that stuff because you have someone that's had enough experience doing this. Um, and basically, all of a sudden, when you know when Vi, who and remember has that, that emotional that emotional pill that she Kai, took, you know, right? Kai yeah, not Vi, Kai takes the, the motion the emotion restricting pill out of her out of her ass. In the previous episodes, she's like questioning it. She's like, uh, you know, what about John? Like John, kind of, you know should have some say in what we're doing here, right? Why isn't he with us right now? And Halsey basically says, well, John is not stable and he won't agree with this. So we got to just have to do it without him. And she's like, guys, I, I really don't like this. And basically Halsey has a separate order to Vanek and to, uh, and to Riz basically saying, knock her ass out and bring her along with you. Um, and so just like the perfect, the just like irony in all this is that, so Kai takes her helmet off because you know, Spartans, <laughs> Spartans in the show don't walk their helmets anymore. First thing happens, they just straight up donkey punch her in the face, knock her ass out. And like, oh, all right, well, that worked. Like, if 
Hey, Kai, if you had your freaking helmet on, that might have not been so damn easy to do. That's why you have helmets. That's why you have armor on. You don't just take it off so you just look. Yeah, you see my face. It doesn't matter because I'll just punch your face in. It doesn't matter. So that's why I thought it was hilarious because it kind of made me always say this. These Spartans have armor for a reason. They're not just there for cosmetics. It's not like Halo Infinite. Oh, I just purchased this cosmetic. No, you're wearing that for literally reasons why. Right, so she gets knocked out in a matter of 2.5 seconds because she wasn't wearing her helmet. Um, and so Halsey just goes straight up heel, heel change. I mean, she was already not really a good person to begin with, but damn, she's going straight villain right now. And she basically was, even Cortana was sitting there like, uh, are you sure you want me to do this? Like, you know, like this is pretty messed up, Halsey. She's like, listen, we got to do this right now. You know, humans are emotional. I'm going to have you take the next stage, which is take over Chief and blah, blah, blah. And Cortana, you could tell, was a little, like, weary about it. She was kind of like, uh, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. Um, so Miranda then finds out, and this is kudos for her because her character is now becoming better. She finds that she's, like, only one of the, all the few brain, brain, yeah, anyone with brain cells left on the show. She finds out that, hey... There's a reason why there's a weird dialect with this translation, this translation of the St. Healy. Um, uh, and basically, uh, she, she finds out Maquis the one that's the reason why it sounds different. It's because it's a human that's saying it. And that's what the tone of voice. She finds out, holy crap, Maquis is literally the spy that killed all those people on that ship. Halsey, being, this is where she has her dumb moments, cuts off all the comms before that point. So she can't even come in contact with her dad or with the Admiral. So she's got to start hauling ass to the other side of the building to get there. And now we're getting into this this whole tense, tense filled section where John is walking with Maki. Maki is basically saying, listen, we got to we got to get out of here. And John's like, yeah, shut up, whatever. You don't have to don't worry about it. Then Cortana shows up on John and just says, wait, like, don't be dumb. Stop thinking of your penis. Just wait for a second, John. You might want to stop because they're waiting to kick your ass. And he actually listens and he tells Maki, like, go find keys, go find the Admiral. I'm going to stay here. So funniest thing ever is that just like with Kai, John doesn't have any of his armor on. He fights against the Spartans and they start whipping his ass, which they should be. Right. The whole point is, is that he has zero armor on. They have all their armor on and he they just start beating the crap out of him. Now, granted, it was a good fight scene. I mean, like. You know, what's funny to me is that, like, when you look at it, the last time we ever saw Spartans fight each other was Halo 5. And I remember watching that scene, and I was, like, thinking, oh, this is going to get good. And, you know, after I saw it, the Halo 5 scene between Locke and, and Chief, I thought that fight scene was the slowest scene I think I've ever seen people in hand-to-hand -hand combat before. It was almost like, you know, like, when you over-choreograph moves, and you got, like, swings, like, oh, and then, like, someone just, like, jumps out of the way and like grabs them like perfectly just throws them and he just flips like it's just like it was so in that game it felt so over choreographed that it just felt not as impactful as it could have been this actually felt like a good hand-to-hand -hand combat with like obviously you know you know Pablo Schreiber did a good job like with no helmet nothing on but like when you saw the Spartans rock their armor and they were fighting imagine if if he actually had Master Chief's armor on. Like, when know, does he ever wear it? You anymore? know, what I mean, like, it, it would be. So, I, I don't even know where it is. Where is his armor? I, I, we didn't see it this entire episode. So, honestly, I think he might have lost it. I think he forgot it on magical. To be honest with you, and um, like, so basically, this fight scene gets pretty intense. They get to the point where they beat the crap out of him. John does a pretty, you know, decent job at fighting back. But at the end, you know, vanix has got the gun on him. And Kai shows up, you know, like she broke out of her held. She has her freaking armor on because, you know, she's supposed to. She They fight a little bit and then it gets into like a basically a Mexican standoff where like Vanek has the gun pointed on John and he's like, dude, th this could have been so much easier if he just didn't do all this stuff. Like, don't make me take the shot. And basically at this point in time, at the same moment, Maki finally gets the keys and gets the Admiral. Miranda shows up and is like, dude. This is the lady that killed everybody. And so now they take her hot. They take her prisoner. And she's fighting against them. The guard takes one of these heat, like heat prongs instead of like the electric ones that would knock her ass out. It's like, let me just sear her neck a little bit. Not like knock her out. Let me just sear it. Let me burn her neck a little. Starts burning her neck. She starts getting flashbacks about, you know, when she got, she was getting seared when she was a kid. Right after she made out with that other guy. 
and uh and also the 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 words that Halsey was saying in the background that like you know humans are like not advanced enough to like deal with the problems and they're still they're messed up and the USC's and all of a sudden she starts like kind of reconfirming that those feelings he has towards humans she basically is a self-hating human basically I guess essentially and so she touches the artifact the dude that was holding her gets incinerated basically and it's a shock wave knocks everyone down and all of a sudden chief basically has that like that that alternate universe thing that she like that he had with her in the last time that they touched the artifact and she just says uh you know uh goodbye chief uh you know in there on the ring and then all of a sudden that's how basically the episode ends and uh, i kind of want to get your opinions before i just give a brief little glimpse at you know the the, the preview because i'm not going to tell everything because that's next week's episode but <laughs> what's your opinions about this last 15 minutes um my opinion my quick opinion was i felt like this was the only good part of the entire show which is yep. why this is not a two like if i was giving episode seven the one with a Quan arc, I probably would have given it a two, to be honest, like a two overall. Um, <laughs> it was horrible in every way, shape, or form. Um, but this episode gave me a three and a half because of the fact that this last 15 minutes was decent. Like it got, it was in, it was tense. There was conflict. There was, you know, political drama. There was fight scenes. Like there was actually bullets fired in this episode. Even though it was bullets, it was bullets fired against, like it was bullets gets fired against the, you know, against Vanek's shield and stuff like, like their bullets were fired by Chief. He shot bullets. All right. We haven't had that in a few episodes. So that's why this did give me more positive on that last scene. But I want to get your opinions before we move on to the final part. Um, so let's go Angelic Hill this time. What do you think the last 15 minutes? Um, yeah, best part of the show. Um, I like the fighting. Um, and again, I just hate that Chief never wears his armor ever. Um, it's just so annoying. Um, we see Silver Team in their in their gear way more um, than Master Chief. Um, but I like the fight, and it was good. And, and like you said, maybe the Spartans should have their armor on more. I hope that's the feedback that that is eventually taken. I just think it's kind of dumb how, again, it it's just feels all forced. Where you know, one time that Maki has you know sex with chief she's ready to jump jump uh sides you know what i mean like it doesn't make sense to me but uh um but whatever you know like she gets there they find out that she's the spy they pretty much cattle proc her but not electricity that would stun her it's just like burning yeah, it would just be way too um, easy if that was the case yeah right so way again too easy. This, this dumb dumb part uh but for the most i liked it um like the overall thing and with halsey not the smartest stuff, but still, like, you know, that just, like, that was stuff I could tolerate. You know what I mean? That's the stuff that, I'm not saying I want more of it, but, like, that's better than than 75% of, of the show that we were watching. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, if we got more of that, that would be better. But, uh, again, we're going to see next week, I think, again, season finale. It just doesn't feel like it's a season finale. They haven't done enough this season to feel like that. That's no. kind of where I am. No, I, I I agree with you. And Haki, what's your opinion? The last fifteen minutes. Yeah, so um, I think we're all in agreement. It was definitely the best scene or scenes uh, of the episode. Uh, again, yeah, Master Chief just not being in in you know in his armor is just ridiculous in itself. But when he's fighting other Spartans, he's also not in his armor. Um, I thought Cortana letting him know, you know, you can see now Cortana's like on his side, like Cortana and him. Yeah, uh, that was cool. I that's like that. cool part. Like they're working together. Like Cortana said, like pretty much screw you to Halsey. Like, you know, she dipped on on Halsey in the room, went right to Chief. I know it was good. So I thought that's cool. I think that connection's cool. Hopefully and helping each other during the fight was cool. I didn't mention. Yeah, that. yeah, exactly. Like hopefully that connection keeps on getting better. Um, Seeing Maki, kind of how Langella Kill said, seeing how Maki was about to switch sides so quickly, like she got found out and she was like trying to explain herself. Like, she, I feel like if they let her explain herself, I mean, she, or, took but like, why did they knock her out? Like, what are they flame torturing her? Yeah, like, they, why they, would you, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not her out. Like, so simple. Yeah, like, I feel like if, if she was able to get it to explain herself, I mean, she took her, her finger out, like, 
it seemed like she, you know, maybe Chief was that good at the, in bed that she was about to really switch sides, you know, like <laughs> she just happy, did, you know. So she just did one so, for the for humanity, just yeah, just, for real. So, you saved humanity. Uh, yeah, and it just like they just absolutely burned her and gave her flashbacks that like humans are pieces of garbage, you know. So she touched the thing, and there you go. The ring, seeing the ring is cool. I, I don't know. I have not seen the previews. We usually take a look at the previews together uh, afterwards, but like, I I don't even know what's gonna happen. I have no idea so, what could possibly happen. So let's finish. Let's finish. That's like our art. Let me just say one last thing. Like I said, this episode all around was better than last one for sure. I mean, you, you can't stoop as low as last week. I mean, I I thought last week was uh, was getting me to the was already gotten me to the edge, and I've probably already started jumping, leaning myself off the ledge. This episode doesn't help me at all. I'm I'm already like already off essentially i'm just <laughs> I'm, I'm free falling right now i'm just I'm still i'm still like in the air like halfway there i'm just still flying downward and and i don't know necessarily if this next episode is going to save me like a, a, a just have a parachute just opens up because at the end of the day one thing i'll notice and we'll do this on our whole season review of, of the first season that's that next week we'll do one on just the entire season at, as a whole but this episode has proven to me that they want to basically destroy the characters that we find and love and also to just break up any good story arc that the gamers like. I, I mean, that's basically what they did. I mean, like, granted, I thought that if you were going to do this first season to just show the Spartans growth and show who they were, then I'd be like, OK, then this is something that's pretty good. Talk about the conflict with the, the Covenant. And, and honestly, you could have had a whole series, se a season on the Rebel conflict and then expand on that. And then the next season, jump to the Covenant. You could have, you could have easily done that. Like, or just I, give us UNSC versus Covenant and show both sides. Yeah, that's I mean, that, that's fine too. My only, the reason why I'm saying that, it was just because like, I feel like you, these opportunities you have with the other Spartans, you're wasting some of them. Like I thought, remember I gave a prediction that they could use the storyline that they had with with uh, with Kai, where she would go and see her, try to go find her parents, because that was actual story, Laura's story that actually does happen in in the actual you know game, not the games, but in the books that you know one of the Spartans does that they do that and they try to go find their parents and they find out the parents are happy with the clone that was that was there and everything and and that's why she's like all right, well I'm just gonna go back to being. Spartan because I feel like their parents are happy without her anyway and like they didn't do any of that stuff like they could have done that to at least salvage the season or at least keep the pacing in the right direction um but they didn't do that so um I want to go to just talk about the preview quickly with you all just because like I said basically what I saw my, my prediction I think is rock solid. I think I, I made this prediction a long time ago where because of the fact that they don't have a lot of money I guess they, they save their money for the first episode, midway episode, and the final episode of the season because they did one episode. The first episode had, had had cool action. Three episodes later, they have action. Three episodes later, they're going to have their final scene of action, and essentially that's what's going to happen. This next episode looks full of action. It shows that there's going to be a conflict that happens, I believe, on Madripoor. I could be wrong. But it looks like it looks like Maki just straight up walked out the front door with the artifact somehow, somehow, <laughs> some way she gets out of there. One, like I said, they didn't show us any real evidence of anything to help understand the situation. But my only thing that I can think of would be that the Covenant, once they she touched the artifact, and Neil and Joe will talk about this. The Covenant might have gotten the wind, like because you know how they can sense whenever someone uses the artifact, and maybe they find out like. Let's go to the, Let's go here. Let's go get the artifact. And Maquis brings it out the door with support from the Covenant, and she gets out of there. And then they just peace out. Because now the scene basically they show that that you know the Admiral was gonna send like ten thousand Marines to go fight the Covenant on I think believe Magical to stop the artifact from being used to find the rings or teleport to the rings or whatever. And and Mass Chiefs is like, no, don't send ten thousand Marines. Just send the Silver Team, and we'll take care of it. Like, so it's going to be Silver Team versus a crap ton of Covenant with that Chieftain, that, that Brute Chieftain that he fought off against in that, that Midway episode. Um, and then you see Maki put the artifact in, and all of a sudden now Hell's going loose. And you see a bunch of aliens, you see a bunch of fighting going on. 
And I, like I said, I think this was the episode that they were saving the rest of their money for to go all out because now you're starting to see CGI and the CGI is not the greatest. It looks like a video game. It literally looks like a trailer. <laughs> you know, like the trailer from Hill 3 where Master Chief's just running and doing stuff like that. It literally looks like that. And I'm kind of like, all right, like, I get it. Like, you're using CGI, but, like, dudes, like, you're, this is, like, that tra- that trailer came out in 2010. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you guys could do a better job with your CGI than do it, like, a trailer for 2010 now. You know what I mean? Like, like it's just, like, just to give you an example, Chief is fighting off against the, the, the war, uh, you know, the war chief. The war, he jumps in the air. The war chief really grabs him, and, like, instantly he just drops down to the floor. You know what I mean? This is one of those weird, like, just boom, like instantly. Like, it does not, doesn't look realistic at all. It's just one of those weird things. But my suggestion is to anyone watching, go and take a look at the, the next episode's, you know, trailer. There's, like, two of them that they have. One of them is, like, you know, like I said, it shows a lot of action. So I think I think at the end of the day, it's going to be filled with action. But, my like, my opinion is I don't know if that's really saving me. That's I'm already falling down the cliff. It's just... When do I splat? When when do I when do I hit the ground? And I, I honestly think I'm about to hit the ground on this next episode. So um, I don't know what else they can really do to save it, unless they like when Joe Kill said, they look at the feedback and say, okay, let's like do a lot of things opposite to what we did before, like keep Chief's armor on. And let's we'll discuss more of that on another day. Yeah, just that, that'll like be the go. season. Then. Yeah, we'll we'll do the end of the season. We'll do our discussions from there, but. Thank you guys for watching, and we do these like reviews nearly almost every week, so we're about to finish with Season 1. Next week, we're going to have our Season 1 review of the Halo TV show, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing that because I want to get everyone's opinion about what they fully thought of the show and what they could do in the future, and that's what we're going to do next week. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Please make sure you jump a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content as well as join us on social media on Discord, Twitter, and TikTok. And all those are located in the description below. That's going to be it for us tonight, guys. This is Marsman from Marsman Gaming. Signing off. Peace out, guys.